Greetings, Sodomites. It's me, Christian Matt. Although actually my name is just Matt, they just differentiate me from the other Matts because I'm the only one that's a Christian. Hey, I'm not paying you to tell your life story. Get on with it. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, as this channel is now dedicated to doing Christian content, we're going to be watching the most Christian movie I can think of. Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter was- Stop! You're doing it wrong. You're supposed to make a joke or, or some observation, and then we throw to the opening theme song, and then you introduce the movie. Oh, uh... How many ancient Egyptians does it take to s- There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a mat. Sad little mat. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter, until the frogs come home. How was that? <sighs> uh, so anyways, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter is a film from 2001 directed by Lee Dimbarbre and written by Ian Driscoll, known for their bizarre pastiches of old B-movies, notably with their somewhat infamous Harry Knuckles series of films. Which Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter almost seems to be an offshoot of, as Jesus is played by Harry Knuckles himself, Phil Karakis. Indeed, most of the cast seems to have appeared in the Harry Knuckles series, or else they just... haven't been in anything else. And this was clearly a passion project on behalf of those involved, as it was filmed on weekends over the course of two years. But these are the sacrifices we make for the Lord. Now before we begin, I'd like to thank our brother John Cleveland for sending in this DVD. And with that, let's get into Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. Yeah. The film opens on a wise preacher. This is the empty house of your soul! Its foundations are built on your childhood, and climbing a lifetime, you may never reach its top floor! Amen, brother! He even gets the scripture quote correct, something a lot of films fail to do. Remember the words of our Savior when he spake in Matthew 28, 20. And behold, I am with you all of the days, until the completion of the age! Which is how you know this film is dedicated to biblical accuracy. And they have a robot read the opening credits. The voice of God's own prophet, Colby the Computer. It does spoil some of the funnier, I mean, holier, characters who show up in this movie, but I'll save a few secrets. The film proper begins as any good vampire movie should, with enough blood for your windshield wiper to... Well, just kind of smear it, if I'm being honest. Where have all our lesbians gone? I wonder that same thing sometimes. We meet Father Albane and Father Eustace, two men of the cloth if I've ever seen them. They've been entrusted with a great secret, so Father Albane has to leap to action. And we get some good old-fashioned gospel music. And where do they go but to the man himself? I'm talking Jason Crawford, I mean Jesus Christ. Lemonade? Will there be enough? Oh, there'll be plenty. I thirst for nothing but justice for the fallen sheep of our flock. A reference to the third chapter of the book of Draculiastes. The Hex Girls show up and it's time for the Lord to do what he knows best. Fight vampires. Unfortunately, he loses Father Albane. But fret not, for he's in a better place. Matthew. Hi. Mark. Oh. And thus Jesus returns to his more commonly known look of short hair and pierced ears. 
the bushy beard Jesus is so outdated. And then Jesus breaks out into one of his classic musical numbers. Here I am at my destination, get to stop this exsanguination. Oof, you gotta hear him do this one on Broadway. Brings down the house. He meets up with Father Eustace to discuss the horrifying things that have gone on. Many lesbians have been disappearing across the city. And the Pharisees in the church won't do anything to help. And it appears they're having lunch at Straight Shooters. Called such to distinguish it from Femboy Shooters, which is promised to the righteous in the Book of Revelations. Our Lord gets some wood for steaks, but he runs into a vile group of miscreants. We are the atheists. Look, Jesus, we're taking your second coming ass down. Consider this the 13th station of the cross. Let's get on with the conversions. Yeah, you can't let atheists push you around. Hey, stop editorializing. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. But they manage to settle their disagreements through polite, reasonable debate in which everyone's thoughts and beliefs are respected. And they get owned with facts and logic. And then we have a reference to the holy text... Saturday Night Fever. It's one of those apocryphal gospels we don't really talk about. JC comes home to find the apostle Mary Magnum waiting for him. They fight, but she reveals she's on his side and invites him to a sauna. There she gives him an advanced rundown of how vampires work, and she has a lead on someone who could find a cure. But first she has to get him a new outfit. Thus why she's become known as Sister Mary the Fashionable. Although personally, I like this look. They've even got scripture on the ball cap. He goes with something more casual, and just in time, suspicious things are happening at Goodwill. And they follow this vampire woman back to a mysterious building. But they put new wine into new skins, and both are preserved together. Those were the words of the Apostle Matthew, chapter 9, verse 17. More completely accurate scripture quotations, although I will correct my brother here, we don't actually know if the book of Matthew was actually written by the Apostle Matthew. In fact, it seems pretty unlikely since he stole most of it from Mark. This is the lab of the vampire leader Johnny Delgado, where Jesus and Mary discover the vampires plan to kidnap and skin lesbians. They go to a lesbian care center, a beautiful place which sadly today would likely be relegated to a Discord server. You wanna play a game? Sure. Close your eyes. <laughs> That was a bad game. I wouldn't play that again. Of course, a fight ensues where Sister Mary is sadly bitten and Jesus really gets it handed to him. He's hurt bad and is passed over by a Chinese priest and a cop, but he's picked up by a lady of the streets. He goes to a restaurant where God speaks to him in the form of a bowl of cherries. You need help, help Jesus, and I have not forsaken you. Oh, it's you, Dad which I also believe is in the Bible. He advises Jesus to visit none other than the famous wrestler El Santo, the Saint. And he truly is the Saint. They shake down the Goodwill manager for information about Johnny Delgado, and you gotta dig this cat's lingo. Hey man, watch it. You get an all in the Kool-Aid, and you don't even know the flavor. I know you know Johnny Delgado. Tell me where he is. Hey, I'm as close as 99 is to 100 to Johnny and his crew, but I don't know you from Adam, madam. Of course, Johnny and his main mellow are out of town today. There ain't nothing shaken till tomorrow at the point. Uh, his words, not mine. So since they have the evening off, Jesus and his saint go to a local scat club. Um, scat music club. That was the only kind in Jesus' day. But when Jesus sees there's no one in the mirror but Santo and his manager, he knows it's a vampire bar, and a fight breaks out. Why would a vampire wear a stake in her hair? That's not in the Bible, for the record. The Hex Girls return, and while the J-Man can dispatch one in the bathroom, the other two get off with Santo and his manager. 
and it only gets worse when Mary shows up, only to be working with the Hex Girls. They force Jesus to come with them or they'll kill Santo. The lowest moment in Jesus' journey on the earth. Luckily, the pastor has some words of wisdom for us. If you would heal your woes and prolong your life, look not here at this pharmacy of human vanity, but here! Recall ye the words of the Messiah as they are spoken in Luke 4, 23. Physician, heal thyself! And it seems even Father Eustace has fallen to the vampires. But they find out who is the Lord when they try to pull Jesus apart and can't seem to. It's then that Santo breaks his chains and frees the good Lord. They begin a showdown in the junkyard, live on TV. But the revelations will not be televised. You're at the wrecking yard! On TV live! I'm everywhere. Yes, it's a fight to the death with Johnny while also fighting less powerful vampires. Father Eustace even manages to stake Junkyard Jesus, but since Jesus is basically a reverse vampire, it only makes him even more powerful, killing all the remaining vampires and turning Mary and Santo's... uh, girlfriend, I think, back into humans. They also neglect to tell us how he takes out Johnny Delgado, so I guess this just kills him too. But Mary asks Jesus for his greatest miracle, to bring back the Hex Girls leader, Maxine Shrike, a shining example of the Lord's forgiveness. But Maggie, aren't you a lesbian? No, I'm bi. Yes! Yes! Ha <laughs> That is indeed worth rejoicing. And the film ends with his famous Sermon at the Park. Back when I was hanging out with the Apostles, we had a saying, if you can bear the whole yoke of the Lord, you'll be perfect. But if you can't, then do what you can. And they play us out with that great gospel tune. It's all good. It's all right. Everybody gets saved. Tonight. Well, amen and amen. That's Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. And I can't think of a more Christ-honoring film can you- Hey! What the fuck is this? Uh, my new show? Get out! God damn, every fucking idiot thinks he can run a YouTube channel. What are we talking about? Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter? Sure, why not? It's a pretty funny movie that effectively blends the language and storytelling of Bible stories with silly Grindhouse B-movies. It's not the funniest take on the idea, but it's incredibly charming for what it is. Honestly, I'm surprised this is something they started in the late 90s because it feels so at home during the Bush administration. I'd say this could make a fun movie night pick, assuming everyone's on board with a little religious humor. Hey, if you enjoyed this one, maybe you'll enjoy Assassin 33 AD, and, uh, until next- Hey! What are you doing here? I told you you were fired! You don't have that authority. Oh yeah? See if I don't make this permanently Matt's fun time Christian movie show, huh? I'll give Christian Matt the whole show. Yeah, well, you know what? You can have the fucking show. You know what? Fuck you! I'm gonna go live in the woods, all by myself. Fuck this show. I'm done. Fine! Go, you fucking ungrateful piece of shit! I'm afraid I must confess, the sin of lust. Don't worry, Santos, he forgives all. Does this mean I can keep the show? Yeah, we'll see.